life on this planet is constantly evolving the land the water and the air have been the vast arenas where the spectacular drama of evolution has been enacted Nature has been the supreme unquestioned director creating the most fascinating of forms mutating and adapting and sometimes perishing to the changing environments animal species over a few million years have evolved to the forms that we are now familiar with the kaleidoscopic world of nature and its million unforgettable images its mind boggling complexity and unending mystery nature remains man's most enduring of interest one of nature's most poignant moments is of the mother feeding her child there are some animals which are warm blooded and feed the young ones with milk these animals including homo sapiens or human beings who produce milk to nourish the young ones are called mammals this is a story about the mammals million years ago in the Triassic age the first reptile like mammal appeared forty million years later in the Jurassic age this reptile like mammal evolved into the first mammal about 135 million years ago in the Cretaceous age, the dinosaurs mysteriously disappeared. From then on, the mammalian species achieved the greatest level of adaptive advantages in the evolutionary race and are today perched on the highest step of the evolutionary ladder as the most successful tetrapod vertebrate. But no mammal evolved the way Homo sapiens did. They became the master of the whole world. The essence of life is water. In the dark depths of the waters, in the oceans, rivers and lakes were the nurseries where life began to form and grow. For many million years, animals spawned and lived in water till the adventurers among the aquatic animals began to probe the slimy edges of the water world and discovered land. These were the amphibians. Early mammals like the duckbill platypus evolved in the shadow zones of water and land.
in the boiling pot of evolution a line of mammals comfortably adapted to the aquatic life and some of them grew to enormous size. The largest mammal and also the largest animal ever to exist is the whale. This gigantic animal smoothly glides through the ocean currents using its massive fins and a huge tail. In order to breathe with the help of its lungs, this fish-like creature needs to surface from the depths. Whales feed on tiny vegetation called plankton that swarms the ocean waters. The whales are gregarious animals and communicate with one another. The loud sonic moans of blue whales carry through deep waters for more than 160 kilometers, allowing them to communicate across vast distances. Amongst the aquatic animals, the bottlenose dolphin is the scientifically best studied and also generally best known of the dolphins. These dolphins are generally dark grey or black above with a lighter coloured belly. Like the whales, the dolphins do communicate with rich repertoire of whistles and rasp-like sounds. They use the sonar ability to locate and hunt the prey. The use of sound waves for the purpose of determining location and direction is called echolocation. In India, we are acquainted with the whiskered aquatic carnivore, the otter. This eater of fish is endowed with a rough chestnut fur and short but strong legs with webbed feet. Otters live in dens, usually by the side of water with an underwater entrance to the den. The smooth Indian otter is mainly found in the plains and feed in rivers and lakes. Some mammals are amphibious in nature, like the smart athletic and the carnivorous polar bear, or the lazy looking African herbivorous hippopotamus. These mammals are not found in India. The hoofed hippos are almost 14 feet in length and could weigh as much as 4,500 kilograms. The semi-aquatic hippo spends the day leisurely in water with only its eyes, air and nostrils above the surface and can remain submerged for 25 minutes at length. The mammals which left the water inched inland into the thickness of dense forests. Some of them took to the trees the timid but the ever busy squirrel constantly scamper across one tree trunk to the another, searching for food. The striped squirrel can be seen commonly all over the Indian peninsula, living close to human habitation. Hunched on its hind limbs, the squirrel can often be seen holding and turning food that generally consists of small fruits and nuts in its forepaws. These rodents, a relation of rats and rabbits, are commonly found in India and are mainly land dwellers. The common porcupine is thick-bodied, grizzled and black in color rodent. Like other rodents, the porcupine is a herbivorous animal with pointed spines or quills growing from back and sides and in some species the quills and spines are from head and tail. Living amongst the trees are the mysterious and nocturnal bats the only mammal capable of sustained flight. Bats are divided into two suborders, larger bats or megabats and smaller bats or microbats. In India, bats are found throughout the country. Bats fly at relatively low speeds with extreme maneuverability. The thin, fleshy membrane of the wing is supported near its edge by greatly elongated bones of the forelimb and second finger. A large number of bats hanging upside down from the tree branches is a common sight. Bats are insectivorous and fruit eaters who mostly hunt at night and they navigate by echolocation. Indeed, these creatures are the masters of darkness. In the flat landscape of the island continent of Australia live a species of mammals that are truly unique. The marsupial, the kangaroo. Most kangaroo species have large ears and relatively small heads. 
They are drably colored to closely match their surroundings, helping them to hide from predators. The strange characteristic feature of kangaroos is that like all marsupials, the female kangaroos lack a true placenta. In the womb, the embryo absorbs nutrients from a yolk sac for four to five weeks and then emerges from the birth canal. The newborn kangaroo secures itself in a pouch that is attached to the mother's abdomen. A physical feature that distinguishes kangaroos from other marsupials is the adaptation of hind legs and tail for hopping. The hind legs are very large, roughly 10 times the size of the small front limbs. Wallaby are small to medium sized kangaroos. The wallaby's long head tapers to a rounded muzzle. Its ears are large, long and deer like. Like most other kangaroos, the wallaby feeds on grass, leaves and other vegetation. When the night begins to fade and the forest slowly wakes to life, the tree branches can be used for some morning exercises and loosening up as a preparation for the day ahead. The monkeys do just that. If you were to visit any forest in India, you would be greeted with the chatter of monkeys. There are two types of monkeys in India, the macaque and the langurs. The macaque is sturdy, squat and solid in build, whereas the langur is tall, slim and stately. Both these arboreal mammals use their limbs with great dexterity and swing from one tree branch to another with consummate ease. Though they use their hands and fingers to grasp and hold, to caress and fondle, the limbs are primarily used for moving. These are the primates. Since hands and fingers are primarily used for locomotion, the thumbs in many of the primate species are reduced or rudimentary. The langur is a long-tailed, slender monkey that weighs from 4 to 24 kg and is commonly found in India. Langurs have heavy eyebrows and often beard-like hair on their chins. Some are strikingly colored and others black-faced. There are many varieties and species of monkeys that inhabit the Indian jungle. To name a few, the rhesus macaque, the lion-tailed macaque, and the howling monkey or the hulok. When one hulok begins to howl, the others in the family join in and then the howling spreads to the other family clusters and soon the forest resounds with the howls of the howling monkeys. The black-faced Hanuman langur is distinct from the capped langur which has a distinctive crown of long, erect and coarse hairs that are directed backward from the forehead. The deep cream colored coat of the golden langur appears to shimmer when in sunlight. These monkeys not only differ in the way they look but in the pattern of their behavior also. Their food habits change according to the region of their habitation. Mostly the monkeys live in groups with an adult male as its leader. To ape means to mimic. The behavior and mannerism of the apes and monkeys seems to be the mimicry of human beings. Like human beings, they exchange messages and show a wide range of emotions. The fur picking that monkeys indulge in is often misinterpreted as a hunt for lice and fleas. The monkeys are remarkable, free of these vermin. The fur picking is now understood as a characteristic way of intercommunication and bonding. Living in groups, hunting and food gathering, many of the primates display patterns of community living and territorial demarcation. The monkeys live in social groups that have hierarchy and interdependence and a family life. Bonded by instinct, the young born clings close to its mother and even the greatest of leaps from one tree branch to another will not dislodge it 
from the firm Embrace. The chimpanzees, gorillas, and the orangutans. Among the apes are the closest in relation to the Homo sapiens. They are intelligent animals and can be trained. Chimpanzees, the more intelligent of the two, have been at the center of a lot of research. But the great apes, the gorillas and the chimpanzees are habitants of Africa. Whereas the gibbons and the orangutans are found in the islands of Sumatra and Borneo in Southeast Asia. In the Indian jungles, the monkeys perched high on the treetops are first to sense danger when large predators stalk the jungle for prey. The monkeys create a commotion up on the trees and give out vocal signals and warn other animals. The deer and the antelopes benefit immensely from this forewarning that monkeys provide. As the sun filters through the forest cover and falls on the glistening grass, these elegant leaps in air by the monkeys can only be matched by the beauty of streaking leap of gazelle or an Indian deer. The antelopes and deer are distinct from each other though they belong to the family of bovines. Antelopes are characterized by the graceful build and long cylindrical lyre shaped horns marked by rings of the males. Females may or may not have horns. Antelopes have unbranched hollow horns that are never shed. The gazelles, the beauty in the antelope family, is distinctive by its soft sandy coloring and a white streak on each side of the face. Antelopes also have a gland under the eyes, secretion from which is used for the purpose of communication. In the Himalayas, one can find the goral antelope. These stocky, coarse-haired, goat-like animals have short horns. The black buck is another attractive antelope with beautiful spiraled horns reaching up to the shoulders. The yellowish fawn-colored coat of the young black buck slowly turns to dark shade of brown or black. The Chosinga or the four-horned antelope is a little different from other antelopes as it has two pairs of horns which are not ringed. In the wild, it is easy to mistake the Nilgiri tar as an antelope. The Nilgiri tar is actually a wild goat. Roaming in small herds, these animals are sharp-sighted and nimble-footed and graze alongside steep mountain walls in the morning hours, closely resembling the antelopes and the gazelles are the deer, which too belong to the family of bovine ruminants. Deer commonly have light, compact bodies and long, powerful legs suited for rugged woodland terrain. They are also excellent swimmers. Unlike the antelopes and gazelles, the deer do not have permanent horns. The deer horns basically grow from above the skull, which start as velvety knobs and develop into solid bony antlers. The growing horns are highly sensitive and the deer takes extra precaution so as not to harm them. When the antlers are fully grown, the velvety covering begins to shed off. And some species of deer rub their antlers against barks of trees to shed off the velvet covering. The cleaning of antlers and its hardening happen as the deer approaches with the mating season. The new horns then become symbols of power and strength. They are the weapons that male deer uses to protect 
and enlarge his harem of hinds. The color of the coat of the deer change while in summer it is of lighter shade, in winters it acquires a darker tone. Some deer have spotted coats, while others are albinos and are called white deer. The hangul or the Kashmir stag has a dark brown coat that fades to a dingy white shade on the underparts. Living in the higher reaches of the Himalayas, these deer, living singly or in small groups, migrate to the lower levels during the winters. The Bara Singha or the Swamp Deer is commonly found in India. These deer have antlers that branch out into 10 to 14 shoots. The Sambar is also a commonly found deer in India and the beam of the antler forks out into two equal lines at the summit. The Cheetal or the Spotted Deer is a beauty that adorns the Indian forest with its graceful and swift movements. The barking deer is distinct in the way it emits the sound that resembles the barking of dog. The most enigmatic of all deer is the musk deer. It is hornless and possesses a musk gland. As the sun sets on the forest and the darkness envelops the animals, the day is over. Then the wild boars forage the forest for food. These animals have a strong sense of smell and are quite intelligent. These omnivorous animals are extremely destructive to crops and cultivated areas. The dynamics of life and living and are governed by the nature's laws. The unending process of evolution continues but tomorrow will be another day, a new day. A little of what has been learnt today will be remembered tomorrow.